In this video, we'll talk about damped vibrations and what we can say about them for their solutions. So for damped vibrations, we have the full consequent equation with no restrictions besides the fact that all these constants must be positive. And we have three different categories of solutions based on the three different categories of these types of equations. So first we have underdamped. And this occurs when b squared minus 4ac is negative, or in the thing about the amount of damping, it's when b squared is less than 4ac or b less than 2 root a times c. So in this case, we're going to get complex roots to solve this problem because the characteristic equation a r squared plus b r plus c has a negative discriminant. So in that case, we will get two roots r equals rho plus i mu, where based on the quadratic formula, rho is negative b over 2, and mu is square root of b squared minus 4ac, which I know is negative, over 2. But since that's negative, what I get when I pull the i out is flipping this around. So I'll have my two roots that are of this form, and with that I will get a general solution y of t is c1 e to the rho t cosine of mu t plus c2 e to the rho t sine of mu t. Now, keep in mind here, rho is always negative because b is always positive. Therefore, these will both decay as t gets big. They will get smaller and smaller. Both of these simultaneously will get smaller, so the whole suit is going to go to zero eventually. So this will decay in time but it will oscillate on its way down because of the sine and cosine terms. So when we're talking about these sorts of solutions, we also would talk about things like quasi-frequency and quasi-period. And in this case, the quasi-frequency is mu. So the quasi-period is two pi over mu. Now, because we have these decay terms in front, these are not quite actual frequencies and periods, hence why they're called quasi-frequency and quasi-period, but they sort of behave like it. This graph, will oscillate at a frequency of mu t, but it has this decaying factor in front of it. So with this, we have one other idea for how these graphs look and how we can draw them. That's the idea of envelope curves. But that comes about first when we decide to recombine this into a different form. So we can rewrite y of t in the form r e to the rho t cosine of mu t minus phi by factoring out the e to the rho t from both terms, and then using the same tricks from undamped to combine the two trig functions into a single trig function. And when we do that, we can notice based on this function here, cosine is always between minus one and one. Therefore, if we look at the envelope curves, which are y upper of t is r e to the rho t, and y lower of t is negative r e to the rho t, we know that my solution is always trapped between these two curves. And what that means is I can use these two curves to sketch a graph of the solution. So my graph is going to look something like this. So I have some axes here. I can draw in my two envelope curves, my r e to the rho t and minus r e to the rho t. Those are exponentials. And I know my actual solution is trapped between them. So I can sort of draw just oscillating going to touch these curves every time it oscillates. And so we end up with a decaying graph that oscillates and is going to sort of shrink smaller and smaller and smaller as it goes on. When you think under damp solution, you should think something like this, an oscillation that's decaying over time. Now let's go on to the two other versions. These are critically damped and overdamped. So critically damped here means b squared minus 4ac equals zero and repeated roots. Whereas overdamped means b squared minus 4ac greater than zero and two different roots. And both of these have similar properties for their solutions because they are only composed of exponential functions that decay as t goes to infinity. If we look at the roots, they will always be of the form negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2. If we have repeated roots, this part is zero, and so I definitely have a negative exponential in the root. If we have two distinct roots, we have negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac under the square root sign. This number here this is going to be positive, always going to be less in absolute value than b is because it's b squared, 
take away some bit and then square root it. So it's going to be smaller than minus than b, in which case negative b plus it will still be negative. So both roots will always be negative here, which is good for our physical model because a positive root here means solution that explodes to infinity very, very quickly, which doesn't really work for a mass on a spring. So for critically damped, y critical, we get a general solution of the form c1e to the minus b over 2t plus c2 t e to the minus b over 2t. And for y over damped, we're going to get c1 e to the r1 t plus c2 e to the r2 t for the two different roots that we get from this setup. And these are all exponentials. They're all going to decay to zero relatively quickly as t gets bigger. How do you tell them apart? Well, the easiest way to note this is that the critically damped case is the fastest way to get back to zero. This is it will decay the fastest. Why is that? Well, that's because of the fact that I mentioned before, where if this is a positive number, it is going to be less in magnitude than b, but that means that minus b plus that number is going to be closer to zero than negative b over 2, which means it will decay slower. So extra damping means I'm going to have one of these two terms that decays slower than minus b over 2t. This is where system optimization comes into play. If you want to optimize your system to relax to neutral as quickly as possible, you want to be as close to critically damped as you possibly can. Another fact about these solutions is that they can cross zero or the origin at most once on the way to their end result. And it's just because there is too much resistive force that if you were to just release at the spring, it would just sort of decay slowly and never cross zero. You could throw it down really hard and it would swing across zero and come back up, but it's never going to cross zero more than once if it's an over or critically damped system. So our solutions here are going to look something like if I were to start here, my critically damped one might look something like this, or if I have a, a large velocity that's negative, something that goes like this and comes back up. And over damped might be a sort of slower decay down to zero, but still going to decay away. This is over damped. These are both critically damped. But here we see no oscillation, no multiple passing through this middle point, either decays right to it or shoots past it once and then decays to zero that way. So that's how we can think about solutions for these types of problems in the different damping cases. What kind of results are we going to get? What are the graphs going to look like? And then how can we interpret this in terms of a physical system for these damping vibration problems?